What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Jordan, a.k.a. Gifted, coming at you with the first vid on Cruise Control. Now, today we're going to look at the so-called 10 greatest point guards of all time. So y'all know I'm the biggest Chris Paul fan out there. The great biggie. Ain't that right, Rob? Uh, Ain't that right, uh, KJ? Uh, yeah. Oh, hey. man. We're going to see where you at on this list. Let's get it started. That series, that since it's been, you know, a year from now since I've uploaded that video. So with that being said, make sure to subscribe button and notification bell so you can be That's updated in career. Stockton at 10. John Stockton right. is a 6'1 point guard who spent almost I all of his two-decade career see. playing for the Utah Jazz. Within his 19-year career, he, alongside his teammate, Carl Malone, popularized the offensive scheme, the pick and roll, to the point. Like, that's too much. Like, I know we can, I'm just saying, like, we can edit this out right I now. See what you mean. But, like, we could just, uh, yeah. like, I, might, I don't know if I should just skip it or just let it play. I'm watching it right now, and then Jerry can just edit it out. Yeah, just, just let it play. Let it it out. Um, just so you can get as much. I mean, just I might it. say something. So you like, just yeah. want to get as much as you are, you yeah. can't get so Jerry can go through and edit it. Mm -hmm. That's why he wants it. He wants me to edit it now before he gets, he wants it. Uh, that's 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 how is that possible? That's what I'm saying. How is that possible? So Especially, maybe if I was fully here, I know kind of what to do. Right? No, no, if, you, like, if, you have it, if you have a video completed and you're in the process of editing it, uh, he can only ask to respect it. Yeah. No, he'll respect the, yeah. fact, the fact that you're doing, yo, dude, the fact that you're doing, yeah, yeah. you're good, bro. Don't worry. Yeah, he'll be, yeah, I'm telling you. See, I guess we could do this. The fact that we're all three in here right now <laughs> doing this, bro. Uh, you I never me? thought. What time do you want to know? Six. Six. Four. Oh. Five. Five. Where in today's NBA, so many exactly. other point guards benefited immensely. Now, when it comes to Stockton, his biggest positive is his longevity and durability. Throughout his career, he only had two seasons where he did not play all available games. And with oh, that level of durability, has translated to over 1,500 regular season games and over 47,000 regular season minutes, oh, which is just days. ridiculous. Okay. And that has led to a level Maybe of statistical see. dominance that has put Stockton yeah. at the top the of the leaderboard here. when it comes to total assists and total steals by a fairly wide margin. Also in Stockton's career, he was a 10-time All-Star, an 11-time All-NBA performer, made, made the All-Defensive team five times, led the NBA in assists nine crazy. times, and led the NBA in steals twice. So why is it Stockton any higher? Well, first has to do with the lack of postseason success, as even though, yes, the Utah Jazz were highly successful during the regular season, during the playoffs, they just couldn't get it done. And honestly, I don't really understand why when it comes to the lack of postseason success, when it comes to John Stockton and Carmelo, right there. people That's only discuss the 97 crazy. and 98 season hey, you know, because if you doing? were to expand the argument and look yeah. at their entire career together, John Stockton and Carmelo would have a losing record during the playoffs and have more first-round exits no, no. We'll than conference finals appearance. And because of the lack of postseason success, it highlights a second problem with Stockton's career, in my opinion, and that is he was – never given the responsibility to lead a team because he was privileged to play with Carl Malone for practically his entire career and with the lack of success as well as yeah, never really receiving like any strong considerations to be an MVP throughout his time in the league it's really hard for me to look at Stockton in any higher light despite the outrageous numbers that really never translated to any major amount of winning. Coming in at number nine, we have Russell Westbrook. Oh, now, within his 12 okay. years in the NBA, Westbrook has displayed the level of athleticism no, that quite honestly has never mm -hmm. been seen at the point guard mm -hmm. position. And because of it, it has aided Westbrook to dominate the league and impact it in various ways to the point where he has had three straight years of averaging a triple I double. Furthermore, despite played. Westbrook playing in the most Lightly. talented era for point guards in NBA history, he is still highly accomplished. Nine-time All-Star, eight All-NBA selections, led the NBA in scoring twice, led the league in assists twice, and in 2017, he was named MVP. Now, when it comes to the negatives, I don't really think there's that much of a surprise here. Westbrook is easily one of the least efficient volume scorers the NBA has offered Every in the season. past 40 years. When it comes to his amount of turnovers, it is ridiculous and completely unacceptable. And in his last okay. three years in OKC, in an attempt to him. lead a franchise, he failed miserably in the first round. And quite honestly, it was fairly embarrassing when he lost to the Utah man. Jazz and Ring. the Portland Trailblazers. Coming in at number eight, I have Jason Kidd. Kidd is a 6'4 right. point guard who spent 19 years in the NBA and was an astonishing passer and an elite level defender. Now, when it comes to Kidd, I believe the biggest positive in his career is that he provided the evidence that he was able to lead a team to the NBA Finals in the early 2000s with the New Jersey Nets, despite them really not having the talents to compete, even in a weaker Eastern Conference. 
Also, Jason Kidd was not only a phenomenal passer, but also a really good rebounder for his height and his position, which I think a lot of people should give him a bit more credit for as he was able to impact the game in more ways than your stereotypical point guard would be able to. But in my opinion, the most overlooked factor in Jason Kidd's career is how versatile he was as a player. Jason Kidd was far from a one-trick pony and could be extremely impactful and successful in various different environments. If you wanted him to stay at the top of the key, run pick and rolls, he could do that. If you wanted a fast-paced offense, he could do that as well. If your team was more defensive-oriented, he also could do that. And if you needed him to be more of an off-guard, he excelled in that aspect as well, which in my opinion is a huge reason why he won in 2011 thanks to his versatility. And at the end of his career, Jason Kidd finished as a 10-time All-Star, a six-time All-NBA performer, making the All-Defensive team nine times, which is really impressive for a perimeter player, yeah, and also let the NBA nine? assist five different times. Now, when it comes to the negatives for Jason Kidd, he obviously struggled when it came down to scoring and shooting the basketball efficiently. So much so early on in his career, people just Ooh, didn't respect this three-point shot go. whatsoever. And also, there off. are stretches in Jason Kidd's career where you I have the question, the lack of success. The most noteworthy ones man. being when this part joined the New Jersey Nets and they still weren't able to get over the hump and make it back to the NBA Finals. Finals as the Eastern Conference got a bit tough. Think you're managing your moderate to severe ulcerative oh, colitis or oh, Are you okay? I did. But even when I was there, I never knew when my symptoms would keep us apart. So I talked to my doctor and learned Humira is for people who still have UC or prone symptoms after trying other medications. And Humira helps people achieve remission that can. Like Tough. Coming in at number seven, we have Steve Nash. Oh. And I, I knew it. That's a prediction. That's a prediction. Yeah. Ah, here, Jenny. Oh, Elijah. You saw the hesitation. I didn't, I'm sorry, Elijah. I'm sorry. That's all right. It's, just, it's just not something you get used to. I actually don't know, even know where this shit is. I don't have a, I don't have a uh, Mac laptop. Thank you. Good luck, Tom. I don't know why people thought I wasn't going to have Nash on this he, list. That's about right. Steve I know Nash, a lot of people over here. He spent much more than his career bouncing Chris back and forth between the Dallas greats. Mavericks and the Phoenix Suns. Uh, However, as we all know, most of his impactful years were playing with he's Phoenix he's in that seven seconds or less he's offense he's coached by D'Antoni during the mid-2000s. And to be fair to Steve Nash, that impact has this is gonna be your best season. into today's this is gonna be your best NBA and with today's point guards. Nash was an amazing shooter and extremely efficient from the field as he has two seasons seasons of a 54-90 split, which rarely happens in NBA history, and you pair that with Nash's sensational passing abilities, and you easily have one of the greatest point guards in recent memory. By the end of his career, he was an eight-time All-Star, seven-time All-NBA performer, two-time MVP recipient, and led the NBA in assists five times. Now, when it comes to the negatives for Nash, there are two things that stand out the most. Defensively, he was a liability for a huge portion of his career. But more importantly, the one thing I consistently harp on when it comes to Nash's career is his inability to win a championship, despite him playing alongside some all-time greats and very talented teammates. I still believe people underestimate how talented those Phoenix Suns teams were and um, how unacceptable it is for them to never yeah, have won a championship or even make an NBA Finals appearance. Next up, we have Chris Paul. And to be completely oh honest with you all, for Chris Paul... Oh, no, they did It was extremely difficult for me. Bro, I was receiving three six for point guard who has played for the Hornets, Clippers, Rockets, and now the any point point guard do that in their has highlights? a very oh my. controversial career. Oh when it comes to CB3 as an individual... He has everything that you would want out of a player, let alone a point yeah. guard. He's a great passer, very respectable assist numbers with a very Respect low turnover nine, rate. Nine Furthermore, defensively is what really separates CP3 from a lot of players on this list. Also, when it comes to scoring, Chris Paul has the perfect mixture yeah, of scoring and passing, and he's extremely efficient in doing so. So he very, very rarely wastes any shot attempts whatsoever. And all of that is translated to a career where Chris Paul is a 10-time All-Star, he is no flaws. NBA performer, nine no, not one flaw in the game. Teams, only flaws is, is back again, six very six rare six for six a six point six guard six to accomplish. He led the, the NBA in assists four times and you know led the NBA in steals six times. 
But of course, oh, now with the negatives, he, he, in, he in my opinion, back. the biggest negative for Chris Paul in his career is his injuries. He, he's very injury prone, and he tends to get hurt in the worst now. times he's imaginable. Worst I mean, worst there's been so many postseason runs where he I mean, should have I mean, gone further than he was supposed to. But the run was cut short due to an injury that he has Remember sustained. That shot and speaking Antonio, of postseason runs, one leg, Chris Paul uh, has only made it to the conference finals one time. Now, for a portion of his career, you can definitely make the argument that he wasn't on teams that were talented enough. However, when you look at his years with the Clippers, that becomes a bit more debatable, especially in 2015. Yeah, Blake Griffin and then when you look at his years you. in Houston, yeah, which one million. of which he eventually did make it to Already the conference finals, that certainly isn't debatable whatsoever. But still, the lack of postseason success, regardless if you want to label him as a quote-unquote choker, which I won't, or attribute his lack of postseason success to his injuries, which I'm more so willing to do. So, regardless, it's... Hey everybody, it's Tony Robbins. How are you they doing? Really put on my seat, that's, crazy questions. That's, that's, that's insane. Right? Three? It's still there. Four, Coming in number five, we have Oscar Robertson. And I'm not going to act like I've sat there and watched <laughs> the big old right. play during this it's time. Black black However, black I will be basing my opinion. No, I got respect for what I've read Don't get me wrong, from man. other people I who did witness him play. Oscar Robertson is a 6'5 point guard who spent majority of his 14 year career know, right. playing for like the Cincinnati Royals and finished up playing like, for the Milwaukee yeah, Bucks. Robertson is famously known for being the first player in the history to have a triple double back in 1962. And if you were to look at Come on. Five years in the NBA, he was very Bro, that is the game, way. Oh, where if you were to average out those first guess, five years, it would give you an average of a 30 point triple double. Furthermore, you can make an argument that in many ways the big O was a pioneer yeah, when it comes to, to the ring, I'm the... improving that they can be impactful yeah. in the league. Yeah, as Bob Cousy yeah, and Oscar yeah, Robertson will. were the only guards in NBA history Greatest up until sport. the late 80s with Magic Greatest Johnson every to win an MVP in the NBA. Also, by the end of his career, he will be a 12-time All-Star, an 11-time All-NBA performer, yeah, and led the league in assists six different times. Back then? Now, there's only two negatives for Oscar <laughs> Robertson, <laughs> one of which he has no control over, and that is the air. And yeah, played yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, I can only yeah. imagine that it had to be significantly easier for him to receive individual accolades as a guard See, during the 60s. Is, is, but more importantly, from what I've understood, the numbers that Oscar Robertson was putting up never really translated to any type of success, especially early on in his career. And some people will go as far as saying that his playing style was a detriment to his team's success. Awesome. And that is awesome. evident he just he realized that control. some of his years in Cincinnati finished with a losing record. Yeah, okay. And there even mm-hmm. some years yeah, where he didn't even make the playoffs. However, I believe a lot of people overlook that thanks to his impact as well as the championship that he eventually won playing alongside Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Yeah, yeah. Coming in at number four, we have Isaiah Thomas, which I feel like will be another controversial take, mm-hmm. but Bad boy pissing no, Isaiah Thomas, a six-foot guard who spent his entire well, career yeah, playing yeah. for the Detroit oh, Pistons. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And in many ways, I feel like a lot of people underrate oh, him as a player. Very impactful when it comes to providing the evidence that smaller guards can lead teams to a championship, which is something that he did not once, but twice, and nearly did it three years in a row if he did not sustain an ankle injury. Also, he's one of the very few players in NBA history who can make the claim that he beat Michael Jordan, Larry Bird, and Magic Johnson, arguably all at their peak as well. And personally, when it comes to me, I'm pretty sure many of you all can tell by now, I really don't care about numbers, especially if they do not translate to wins, which is why I applaud Isaiah Thomas even more, because in the early 80s, Isaiah Thomas was averaging great numbers, but changed his game significantly by the late 80s, entering the early 90s, as more of an off-guard and gave Joe Dumars a bit more responsibility. Also, by the end of his career, Joe Isaiah Dumars, Thomas finished as a 12 time All-Star, five-time All-NBA performer, and let the yeah, NBA yeah, assist once as well as being a two-time champion. I can't final MVP. Four games. turnovers a game? What's up, you guys? Paul don't do that. Warrior training. I want to come on here Chris and make this Paul, quick Joe video Dumars, because Dumars, today Dumars, was amazing. Them caliber players in the era. If you give Chris Paul... I made those caliber players when they were back in the day, and it was now he's winning the, the same league. momentum strategy that. that I've been trying to for years. I, I bought a stock app. 
champion in 1990. Coming in number three, we have Stephen Curry, 63 point guard, who has spent all of his career playing for the Golden State Warriors and is still active in the NBA. Pretty sure many of us are aware who Steph Curry is. So just briefly, six-time All-Star, six-time All-NBA performer, three-time NBA yeah, champion, two-time guy. MVP yeah. recipient, and the first ever unanimous MVP in yeah, NBA LeBron history. But more importantly, Steph Chris Curry's Paul impact on not only the NBA, NBA but just how the game of basketball <laughs> has sure been played five. is undeniable. And it's quite honestly astonishing how much the game has changed within a small amount of time. The only two negatives that I have with Curry in his career is A, defense, and B, the potential lack of longevity because Curry is already entering his 30s and he only really has six to seven elite level years. Normally players that I have this high up in the rankings, they have a 10 year stretch of elite level play. And I don't really know if we're going to see that with Curry due to his injury prone past that will also impact where he falls statistically when it's all said and done. But nevertheless, his impact, his greatness is undeniable. Coming in at number two, we have Jerry oh, West. Oh, yes, no, Jerry West. Oh, oh no. no. No, I did not watch Jerry West play. So similar to Oscar Robertson, basing this heavily off of what I've been told and what other people have claimed about him in his career. Witness him. I want to come to Jerry West, 6'2 point guard, who spent his entire career playing for the Los Angeles Lakers, who put up remarkable numbers. And quite frankly, I think he is grossly underrated when it comes to the type of impact he had as a small guard in an era in the league that Quite frankly, yeah, it was wait. not built for him oh, to succeed in many regards. Will, not only was he putting up great numbers, mm-hmm. but also they did translate to a level of success that yeah, routinely positioned him to win a championship and put him in the finals. He eventually won a championship. Yeah, but it was only like the finals MVP 15 teams during the year that they actually ended up losing to the Boston Celtics. So there's that. Then when it comes to individual awards, and they're all there, all-star appearances, all-NBA selections, and also all-defensive teams as well. But very similar to Oscar Robertson, the biggest knock that I have for Jerry West is the area that he played in, and fortunately, he does not have any control over that whatsoever. Well, just look at that in and out right there. Look at that. I get nobody. You know, he's the second-best point guard of all time. I don't care what you tell me. He's doing that. Look at that. Who's that getting? Like, he's not even – he's doing like – that wouldn't give me yeah, right now. Just head the only reason why I have Jerry West uh, over not, Steph Curry is just because Curry has not right played long well enough, in my opinion. <laughs> if he pieces together eight, nine, potentially ten elite level years, Ooh. I have no Ooh. problem with that. Ooh. 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 Whoa. Eight, whoa, whoa, whoa. Eight, okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. Nine, potentially ten nice. elite some. level years, I have no problem at all putting Steph Curry over That's Jerry West, it. even if that means he doesn't win another championship. And finally, we have... Magic Johnson. Honestly, right, I don't really right. think that That's this is too controversial yeah. here. Magic Johnson, 6'9 point guard. Just nasty. 6'9 point guard who spent his entire career playing for the Los Angeles Lakers. Ended his career as a 12-time All-Star, 10-time All-NBA performer, 3-time MVP winner, 5-time champion, and also won 3 finals MVPs. He also led the NBA in assists 4 times and led the league in steals twice. Magic Johnson undeniably we'll is the video. most accomplished point guard in NBA history. And again, I don't think it's deniable. Then when it comes to postseason success, it is impressive how immediate the change was for the franchise when before Magic arrived, they were a first round exit, possibly second round, but as soon as he comes on the team, they immediately made the finals and won the championship, and then in the sophomore season, he gets hurt, not 100%, and they were right back to a first round exit team, and still made the finals and not even the finals. This team was more or less just Magic Johnson, James Worthy, and Byron Scott. Now, finally, I'm not, I said, I'm that's not my list. Let me know what you think about it in the comment section work. below. But my, please I'm don't forget, that. hit the subscribe button, almost at 200K, oh. and notification bell for all my podcast listeners out there. Y'all know, Noti gang, 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 gang. All right, well, all right, y'all.